there's new data proving that gaining rating is actually simpler than you might think. No, it's not fixing queue times, because apparently that's actually impossible. Instead, this Reddit user went through thousands of arena logs, discovering links between individual spells and how much they affect arena rating. The results were quite shocking. For instance, what spell do you think has the biggest impact on a Destro Warlock's rating gains in arena? It's Chaos Bolt, right? No, it's actually Immolate. But here's where things really get interesting. The data also calculated how much an effect damage and healing has on rating gains for every spec, and healers universally were at the top. If you do more healing, you will win more games. Sustained damage DPS like Affliction Warlock and Elemental Shaman were also on the high end, and Frost DK and Sub Rogue were the lowest. But then there is Demon Hunter, sticking out like a sore thumb. Why is it less important to do big damage on a Demon Hunter? Don't they do the most damage in the game? Today, we will answer this question and explain what all of this new data means for PvP, while also giving you some tips on how to increase your damage or healing right now. First up, let's go over the most important findings from the research. As we mentioned, there is a positive correlation between throughput and rating for every spec in the game, with healers seeing the biggest benefits overall. When you compare the effect throughput has on rating for every DPS, the results make a lot of sense. High sustained DPS specs have the highest correlation, with frost DKs and sub rogues actually being on the lower end. Since these specs are designed around doing damage and smaller, burstier goes, they see less benefit from trying to max out their sustained throughput. And once again, healers see the biggest gains overall. If you can do more healing, you will win more gains. But this comes with an obvious question. How do you increase your damage or healing if you're already spamming your buttons? The data also shows how closely each spell correlates with rating gains, and how some players might actually have the wrong ideas about what spells actually matter. Let's think about an experience we've all had in Arena. We've all had those games where it feels like you were absolutely crushing on damage doing crazy APM, but then you look at the meters and somehow you're dead last. You just spent the entire game spamming your damage globals, so how could you possibly be lower than the noobs you just beat? In this case, you might be working harder, but you could be doing more by working smarter. For Destro Warlocks, we can see that Immolate has the highest coefficient for rating gains, which means that the higher you go in MMR, the more often Immolate will be used. Chaos Bolt also has a positive coefficient, but is way less impactful. How could this be? Isn't Chaos Bolt the reason why Destro Warlocks win games? I mean, look at this damage. It's way higher than Immolate, but here's the truth. Sometimes the most important spell in your toolkit isn't the one that deals the most damage. Immolate has a bunch of downstream benefits, like increased haste, a damage modifier on other spells, and now with the Season 3 tier set, Immolate ticks can even reset the cooldown of Dimensional Rifts, which are a massive source of Destro Warlock damage. Neglecting Immolate means losing out on all of these downstream benefits. Here's a log from a 1400 Destro Warlock, and as you can see, Chaos Bolt was their number one damage source in a 2 minute game casting it almost twice as much as Immolate, which, in reality, shouldn't be happening if their goal is to maximize damage. Not only is Immolate going to benefit more damage downstream, but it's also way easier to cast. So if you are a Warlock player out there juking every second for those precog Chaos Bolts, you're actually overworking yourself, dealing less damage overall, and as a result, not seeing the same rating gains if you just work smarter. But it's not just Destro Warlocks that are making this mistake. Remember, the overall trend is still the same. No matter what spec you play, you will gain more rating by just being better and more efficient at doing damage. This is why healers see the biggest gains from simply doing more healing, with 4 out of the 5 highest throughput to MMR correlations belonging to healer specs. If you spent any time on the forums, on Twitter, or on YouTube, you've probably heard that healing is hard. And it's true. This expansion, healing might be the hardest it's ever been. Combine overtune class reworks with micro CC and crazy levels of dampening, and it's no wonder that solo shuffle queue times take forever, but there is a silver lining. For almost every healing spec, the number one most impactful ability is an instant cast maintenance spell. Preservation evokers have the highest correlation between throughput and rating, with the main drivers being Echo and Reversion, two spells that make up the core of preservation evoker healing. We see an almost identical trend for resto druids where Life Bloom and Grove Guardians are the biggest drivers behind rating gains. What this means is that healing is less about big, reactive heals and more about routine maintenance. This is why healing might seem so hard for some players. Instead of planning ahead and ramping up their healing output in advance, they instead wait for damage to happen before pressing their heals. Without high damage stacks in Arena these days, even being a few globals behind can feel like a massive hill to climb and is the number one pain point to avoid for any healer. So now, based on the data, we know two things are objectively true. 
Number one, the most efficient way to gain rating is increasing throughput. No matter what spec you play, putting up bigger numbers will result in rating gains. Number two, some players are working harder than they need to while doing damage. More often than not, doing bigger numbers is making the most out of core rotational abilities. So if you can simply stick to a few damage or healing goals, you're already doing most of the work needed to climb. This is why we start our damage and healing courses by laying out goals for every spec. Because once you know where your main sources of damage should be coming from, you can make the most out of the game winning burst sequences. And learn the min-maxing tips that are actually being used by the world's highest rated players. The key to quick and easy rating gains could just be a few clicks away. So at the end of this video, be sure to check out skillcap.com where we guarantee you will gain at least 400 rating just by using our guides. While the data shows that some spells correlate positively with rating gains, it also shows which spells do the opposite. There are some abilities which look good on paper, but don't actually help you win games, at least at higher ratings. On the extreme end is Sniper Shot. If you play Mark's Hunter, this ability might look strong and high impact, but in reality could actually be holding you back. It is one of the few spells that actually has a negative correlation with MMR. The higher you go in rating, the less often Sniper Shot is used. And this makes perfect sense, because the ability becomes insanely clunky against better players. With a baseline 3 second cast time, it will be hard to land in lobbies where players are more likely to line your cast and tunnel you down. On top of this, Sniper Shot takes up a PvP slot, which means you either need to give up damage reduction, extra CC, or even CDR in order to play a gimmicky ability that has an easy counter. There were also negative correlations between spells you might not expect, like Shadow Strike for sub rogues, which, just like Sniper Shot, is used less often by higher rated players. But unlike Sniper Shot, Shadow Strike is a pretty standard ability that most rogues will use multiple times per game. But if you know anything about sub rogue damage, it's that Shadow Strike really isn't used while bursting. In fact, if a rogue is using Shadow Strike during dance, it either means they have no cooldowns or they might have messed up, either by not cheap shotting and leaving a gap in their lockdown, or even worse, over capping their combo points when they could have pressed Eviscerate. And what do you know? Eviscerate also has a high coefficient for rogue damage. Honestly, there are so many places where damage can go wrong, which is obviously unfortunate since we know now how impactful it is on your overall rating. But if we go back to comparing specs, some of the data is a bit confusing. Demon Hunters, Ret Paladins, and Feral Druids all have lower scores despite being known as big damage specs. So what's going on here? Let's start with Demon Hunter, since apparently they've been pretty popular. Demon Hunter actually has one of the lowest damage to MMR correlations, which means players at 1400 or 1600 are actually doing very comparable damage to rank 1 Demon Hunters. If we compare DH to a spec like Resto Druid, which has a much stronger correlation, the difference is obvious. Resto Druid has a much steeper curve, which means it gets better gains from increasing throughput. Red Paladin is very similar to Demon Hunter, seeing less returns overall when it comes to dealing damage. So what does this mean for these two specs? Why isn't doing bigger damage leading to more rating gains? If we had to guess, it's that dealing damage as a Demon Hunter or Rep Paladin is actually pretty straightforward, and anyone can do big damage while playing these specs. Because of this, throughput-heavy melee might see better returns by improving non-damage parts of their gameplay, like utility and CC. The next time you're in a lobby with a 2k Demon Hunter who brags about topping the meters, you can safely tell them that they're not that special, since a 1400 player could probably do the same thing. Instead, what these 2k rated demon hunters should be caring about is using their defenses properly, or landing more efficient CC chains. Feral Druids are in a similar boat. Many players make the mistake of thinking Feral Druid is basically a melee version of Affliction Warlock, and that the best Feral Druids are multi-dotting all game. But if we look at the biggest differences between high rated and low rated Ferals, two spells that stand out are the Feral Frenzy and Maim. Higher rated Feral Druids are using Frenzy more often because they're landing more Cyclones, which gives them Feral Frenzy procs for free, making it a bigger driver behind their overall damage. And since MAME has a high coefficient, we can also guess that these same druids are also being more aggressive with other parts of their CC kit. So if we go back to our original correlations, we can draw some conclusions. If your spec is towards the right side of this graph, it's safe to say most of your gains will come from increasing your overall throughput. But if your spec is towards the left side, bigger damage will still help, but you should place equal emphasis on defensive play or control. For everyone else, aim for a healthy balance of both. Getting more efficient at dealing damage will always be core, and in combination with good defensive play and effective CC, the sky is the limit for rating gains. But at this point, you might be wondering how it's possible to effectively increase your damage output even if you feel like your damage is good enough. 
While every spec in WoW has different damage or healing profiles, there are some universal rules everyone should follow. To start, everyone should aim to minimize dead globals. A dead global refers to the time where you could press an ability but otherwise don't, and this problem affects all roles. Melee tend to have dead globals when they are getting kited. They select a target and then try to stick to it all game, even when there are opportunities to attack something else. By doing so, they leave a ton of damage on the table and fail to build free momentum. When you watch high-rated players like Joe Fernandez, he might rage while getting kited, but uses every moment he can to squeeze out extra DPS on any off-targets, which even includes pets and totems. Ranged DPS have the opposite problem, and their dead globos are generally caused by movement. Think about it. If you think your damage is amazing on a dummy, you're probably let down every time you enter Arena, where people don't stand still all game and instead bully you with interrupts and CC. But what's crucial during these moments of frustration is to do everything you can to press an ability every global. Cycling through spell schools while interrupted, or even weaving an instant cast spells while you juke. In many ways, healers are the same as casters, but with a bit more nuance. Healers should try and increase their GCD usage too, but since mana can become an issue, they should find other ways to maximize their actions per minute. This could be as simple as repositioning to a pillar to avoid CC, or even assisting with damage spells, which are virtually free for all healing specs. And remember that healing in Dragonflight requires you to be proactive. You can't just sit and wait for damage to happen and then expect to heal through it. Instead, you either need to heal proactively or ramp your healing in advance so that you aren't being overwhelmed. Another almost universal damage rule is to avoid overcapping. This applies to almost every single damage dealer in some capacity and is a really easy mistake to avoid once you're aware of it. If you play Warrior, there will be moments where you will be at or near your rage cap. And whenever this happens, your goal should be to dump rage however you can, making sure you're doing a good job keeping up ignore pain on yourself or dumping even more rage with rend. By overcapping, you're wasting potential damage or survivability. Other DPS specs have more complicated secondary resources like soul shards, but the same rule applies. Any soul shards you generate above the cap will always be wasted, so instead it's better to keep spending whenever possible. Even if you don't have a rage bar or soul shards, chances are you have some resource or buff that gets capped, and it's important to make sure you are not leaving damage on the table by increasing the amount of resource dumps you do throughout each game. Before we wrap up, we want to give a huge shout out to Artmeister for compiling all this data, and we highly suggest you check out the thread for yourself. Also, we want to give another huge shout out to WoW Arena Logs, which is an amazing tool for recording data of all of your games. You can even see an interesting looking replay of each match, which is useful if you can't record your own gameplay. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcapped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.